Alright, welcome back for the next part of my Resident Evil 2 walkthrough. So, as I was saying in the last video, I kind of touched on it. Um, there's this um, feature in the game where uh, if you manage to make it to the police station without picking up any items, you will encounter a zombified uh, Brad Vickers from the first game. He's not, he's not really in the first, he's the chopper pilot from the first game, he's not really in it a whole lot at all. But um, you'll encounter the zombified version of him, kind of like a little mini boss. If you kill him, uh, he gives you a special key that opens these lockers right here, and it's like a, you can change your costume there. It's a cool feature, and it's really cool killing Brad, um, but I chose not to do that just because I wanted the items. that is a feature in the game. I'm thinking about almost just like doing it and recording it and adding it in. I think I probably will. So anyways. but the door won't budge. It seems to be sealed from the other side. Alright, so there's uh, some handgun bullets hidden here behind the statue. Uh, we have a little puzzle here. Push this statue out. This red jewel. Come to the star's office, which is like the coolest area in the whole game. It's a huge tag to Resident Evil 1. There are various trophies. Oops. Uh, 
One of them reads, Markman, Marksman Contest winner Chris Redfield. A picture of the star's members. You can see Alpha Team and Bravo Team. Handgun bullets here. Um, it's trash. Someone must have searched the desk. This is Albert Wesker's desk. So there's another feature in the game that um, is incredibly tedious and a little bit weird. But if you search this desk, like, 50 times, you will get an item. Take the film. There isn't anything else. It appears to be the replica of a gun. The owner is probably the member of the NRA. This is Barry's desk. Barry Burton. Here we find Chris's diary. August 8th. I talked to the chief today once again, but he refused to listen to me. I know for certain that Umbrella conducted T-virus research in that mansion. Anyone infected turns into a zombie. But the entire mansion went up in that ex explosion, along with my incriminating evidence. Since Umbrella employs so many people in town, no one is willing to talk about the incident. It looks like I'm running out of options. August 17th. We've been receiving a lot of local reports about strange monsters appearing at random throughout the city. This must be the work of Umbrella. August 24th. With the help of Jill and Barry, I finally obtained information vital to this case. Umbrella has begun research on the new G-Virus, a variation of the original T-Virus. Haven't they done enough damage already? We talked it over and have decided to fly to the main Umbrella HQ in Europe. But I won't tell my sister about this trip because doing so could put her in danger. Please forgive me, Claire. Let me find the unicorn medal. The desk is disorganized and untidy probably reflects the owner's personality. This is obviously Chris's desk. And you can't really see it because it's blurry, but there's his leather jacket that says Made in Heaven. And you can't really see it either, but on the back of Claire's vest there it also says Made in Heaven, which is a reference to the rock band Queen. Kind of like Billy's tattoo from uh, Resident Evil Zero, which says Mother Love, which is a Queen reference. Nothing suspicious nor out of the ordinary. It's a picture of a young man. There's a good chance it's her boyfriend. This is Jill's desk. And it's funny because in the remake they changed the picture to a dog. Like, Jill should be single, I guess. And then if you head over here, this is Rebecca's desk, obviously, because she's the medic. There are unopened cardboard boxes. Looks like a rookie's desk. Uh, 
could have swore that if you searched that first aid bag right there, you would get a first aid spray. Just bask it in. I love the music. I mean, it gets its own theme song. The music changes when you go in here. It's the Star's Office theme. I'm pretty sure that's everything that's uh, in this room. Federal Police Department, Internal Investigation Report. Mr. Chris Redfield, Raccoon City Police Department, STARS Division. As per your request, we have conducted our internal investigation and discovered the following information. Number one, regarding the G-Virus, currently under development by Umbrella Incorporated. So far, it is unconfirmed that the G-Virus even exists. We're continuing with our investigation. Number two, regarding Mr. Brian Irons, chief of the Raccoon City Police Department. Mr. Irons has allegedly received a large sum of funds and bribes from Umbrella Incorporated over the last five years. He was apparently involved in the cover-up of the Mansion Lab case, along with several other incidents in which Umbrella appears to have direct involvement. Mr. Irons had been arrested under suspicion of rape on two separate counts during his years as a university student. He underwent psychiatric evaluation as a result of the charges, but was released due to circumstantial evidence, as well as his phenomenal academic standing. As such, extreme caution is advised when dealing with him. Jack Hamilton, Section Chief, Internal Investigations, United States Federal Police Department. Okay, so the police chief is a rapist. Thumb. Actually, really quick, 
I guess I'll go develop that uh, film. I kinda knew that, that was gonna happen, but it still scared me. <laughs> so just like a and you will be fine. Obviously, it's the spade key. Spade key here. Patrol report. Patrol report, September 20th, 9.30 p.m. Reporter Sergeant Neil Carlson. We received a report of a suspicious individual skulking around the sewers in the outskirts of Raccoon City. I searched the area and located the individual, but he ran away before I was able to question him. I recovered the following items. A small amount of C4 plastic explosive, an electronic detonator, 9 by 19 parabellum rounds, and infrared scope. Broken. End of report. Most on Umbrella Incorporated.
discard the spade key. Just missed her. Who is she? I don't know. But it's too dangerous for her to stay here alone. Leon, I'll go look for her. You go and find us a way out of here. Of course. But before I forget, here's a radio. That way we can keep in touch if something comes up. I'll go look for her. You go and find us a way out of here. That door earlier that was sealed from the other side. Some handgun bullets down here. Something there's something else down there too, but maybe not. single game calls them something different. And we get to the library. files primarily on Umbrella Incorporated. Hmm. Lots of Umbrella stuff in a police department. That's for sure. Head up these stairs. We're gonna head down this way. through. You examine this. Seem to pay attention to that. Um, two spaces, one space, two spaces. That's basically how I remember. This needs to go right, and this needs to go right. Let's 
second floor. Emergency ladder here that you can lower, making a shortcut to the first floor, which is very useful. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to use it real quick because I have a full inventory. in here. that there was an item box in this room so it doesn't really matter. But oh uh, yeah. And we get the lighter. Some ink ribbon. And a file. Secretary's diary A. April 6th. I accidentally moved one of the stone statues on the second floor when I leaned against it. When the chief found out about it, he was furious. I swear the guy nearly bit my head off, screaming at me never to touch the statue again. If it's so important, then maybe he shouldn't have put it out in the open like that. April 7th. I heard that all the art pieces from the chief's collection are rare items, literally worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't know which is the bigger mystery where he finds those tacky things, or where he's getting the money to pay for them. May 10th. I wasn't surprised to see the chief come in today with yet another large picture frame in his hands. 
This time it was a really disturbing painting depicting a nude person being hanged. I was appalled by the expression on the chief's face as he weird at that painting. Why anyone would consider something like that to be a work of art is beyond my comprehension. Alright. So I'm actually going to backtrack real quick. Lighter. I get a second red jewel. So far, the police department already has like one more item box in the mansion. I'm gonna store the lighter. It's been a little while since I played this, like I said. I just don't remember exactly. You know. What items I need. Mm. But.
flaming helicopter crash on the side of the building. that door. He's been pecked to death. Have some handgun bullets on him. side of the helicopter. The helicopter is a complete wreck. Yeah. Trying to go around them, obviously, but All right, head over here, and we find the valve. There's another bow gun here, because, like I said um, at the beginning, if you go through it without picking up any of the items, you encounter Brad. But if you do that, then you don't get the bow gun. So, this is where you would get the bow gun if you did that. Or you get two. Some ink ribbon. Um, try to open this door. And some zombies are going to. Just kind of, why not?
Over here, and there's more handgun bullets. This, this game does a really good job of hiding the handgun bullets. Like, you know, a lot of those you just really wouldn't know about. But if you do know about them, then this game just throws bullets at you. I mean, look how many bullets we have. I really haven't been conserving them. Thank you for watching, and I will be back soon for the next part.